it's kind of a nice to see, especially with the climate of Muslims here in China, with what you know, all the unfortunate stories that we've been hearing. So seeing these Chinese Muslims run an Afghan restaurant here in Yiwu was super, super. Hi, my name's Hila. I'm a someone in the making who's absolutely in love with film and likes to sing out loud when no one's home. I know. <laughs> Cheesy, right? Update. We currently made it to Shanghai after 19 hours of... How many hours of traveling? Is it here? Almost more than 20 hours of traveling. We have no money. <laughs> we have no translator. And we're trying to find a, sta a train station to... We arrived to Shanghai, okay? And... The plan was to take those bullet trains from uh, Shanghai to Yiwu, which is the city we are currently in. And going to Afghanistan, I was like, I thought that was kind of like the worst of the worst places I could ever go to in terms of like having to, you know, travel and work my way around. But fortunately, I know the language and so does my family and my family's from there. So it wasn't that big of an issue. Being in China though, when it's just my brother and I, and not knowing how to speak Mandarin or any other dialect of Chinese was super difficult. So extremely difficult. Like we would go up to people and be like, hey, hey, so do you know where the train is? And they'd be like, looking at us like, what? And like in the back of my head, I'm like, why don't you know English, right? And I'm like, wait, I'm sure when the Chinese come to the US, they're probably screaming at us saying, why don't you guys know Mandarin? And so I, um, in that moment, I was just like, wow, you're an ignorant <laughs> you know, I was like, you should have been prepared. But again, we didn't have time to prepare. Update on the update. Zaki knows what he's doing. Except now we just need money. We tried setting up this WeChat online banking stuff. It's not working out. Now, Zaki is trying to be like Harry Potter and trying to find the train station. So the plan is we're going from Shanghai to Yiwu. That's where we will be staying for most of our time. I took it. Update on the update. Where's the money though? Well, it says depart. No, I guess you can use cards. We're a wreck. Oh, let's ask, yeah. Hello. Update on the update on the update. There's only two tickets left for the train that we want to take to Iwu. Will we get on this train? Will we get on this train, Zakir? Shishi? I'm gonna learn Chinese. I think this is honestly, this trip is a, a way for us to learn, finally learn Mandarin. Like, it's just, it sucks not being able to know the language. We went past the airport and we were told that we could use this app called WeChat. We're trying to put it in our credit card numbers and all of a sudden we realized, oh shit, this is only available to actual like Chinese citizens because you need to have like a Chinese bank card. So that was kind of like pointless and now we were past the airport, so we couldn't really exchange money at this time. We needed to find a place where they could properly exchange our money. And at this time, we're like trying to buy train tickets as well. And we go to the train ticket station. And my brother's like, oh, I'm sure they're gonna get like, you know, they're, I'm sure they're gonna accept major credit cards. And I'm like, bro, I don't know. It's the Chinese. They're really prideful about their own uh, apps and shit. Um, and so we, we go to the train station. They ask for our passports. Give them our information. We're like, we want to get, a, we want, we want two tickets to Iwu. And what do they say? Okay, where's your WeChat? Everyone uses WeChat here, and we couldn't. So, anyways, long story short, my brother had to go back to the airport to exchange the money properly, actually carry like bills. And I'm standing with four suitcases, okay, in the middle of a train station, just kind of minding my own business. And during this time, an Australian dude comes up to me. This old Australian guy and he's like talking to me and he goes oh you know like what do you need I'm like oh you know my brother just went to go exchange the currency and then he starts getting um, he starts asking questions like okay you're from America but obviously you don't look this is my poor attempt of at an Australian accent by the way but he's like you don't look like a typical American blah, blah, blah. and I was like boy I was born and raised there but okay my family's from Afghanistan and so I guess like, he starts getting political and I'm like, boy, why are, you going to, why are you going to get political with me? And he's like asking questions like, you know, what do you think about the current, like, do you prefer the current government or 
the Taliban era and I'm just like, do I look like I'm a political analyst? Like why are you asking me? I'm just a 23 year old who wants to get to Iwu and doesn't want to be stranded in the airport. So I'm currently waiting for my train ticket and um, while I was waiting in line, I met this crazy Australian. He's actually buying his tickets right now and he's getting so political with me right now about how the like what my thoughts are on the war in Afghanistan and how he's like yeah, pro this, pro that. Yes. What they said was UN, not dollars. Yeah, no, we, that's what we're, my brother's currently all exchanging. Is, all you need is two of these. We don't have those, we don't have any. Why did you change? Because, Come on. I know. We were using, no, we were planning on using WeChat. He sounds like my mom. Uh, WeChat's only for the Chinese. We didn't know that. You gotta have a bank account. I was. I was currently recording a video of myself. I lived, I lived in China for a long time. Oh. And off he goes. He just uh, yelled at me for not um, having my money. I can't even speak right now. So anyways, while my brother is currently off uh, exchanging our dollars into Chinese currency, um, we we're actually planning on using WeChat, which is kind of like an online banking, kind of like Venmo, um, but for China. However, we just found out that WeChat is only created for the locals using their local banking. So that was a fail. You live and you learn. So now we're using just old-fashioned cash. Um, okay, so finally my brother comes back. He has actual, you know, yawn bills. Um, and we finally purchased our tickets. And the only thing that was left was the business class tickets, which was kind of nice. Anyway, so yeah, we finally go to the train station. Oh no, we go to the business lounge because our train that we were supposed to take or had taken off. So we ended up just chilling at the lounge. Um, I was really disappointed in the Chinese snacks. Again, I'm really, really bad with tasting new foods, which is kind of ironic because I'm always like, go explore, go discover. But like when it comes to food, I like to stick into what I know. I don't like taking my chances because my stomach can easily get upset. Um, that's the one thing I don't like about myself. I'm trying to change that, so I was just like, you know what, let me just try these Chinese snacks. So I got this like thing that looked like um, it could be cheese and like crackers. <laughs> being the complete opposite it was like a cookie and like a sweet jam and I'm like what the hell this looks like cheese so it was really disappointing Now I know why you guys travel business. Cause this show does feel good. Alhamdulillah. AC feels good. AC feels good. The seats feel good. And the seats also recline. And you can also do a ton in the background right here. You know? The one the Zayda Kari thing. She has a kid. We're on the bullet train. Is that what they call? How fast does it go? It goes fast. Okay, is it okay? Airplane. Because there's no flights that really go to Yi Wu from, Shang, from Shanghai. And uh, this is like an hour and uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes train ride there. Which I hope we get to see some of China. But yeah. As you can see, the kid doesn't know. The kid doesn't have the energy to vlog. You know, he doesn't. He's, to this weekend, he's gonna evolve. He's gonna gain some of that energy that he's currently lacking. I have energy because I walked fucking four miles. Your ass was just sitting there. <laughs> he Look walked. This. I have fucking proof. He walked four miles just to exchange his dollars. Look, money. Look, walking and running four miles today. Four miles. Wait, what if the train leaves? Wait, update the kid. Have you wanted to kill me yet? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um. He still hasn't killed me yet, but we made it to Shanghai. Now we're off to Yiwu.
debrief time to care. We made it to Yiwu via bullet train. Oh shit, would that be? What? Did you see that? What? Like a red thing. Anyways, we made it to Iwu uh, via bullet train, and now we are taking. What is it? An Uber here called? We're not taking an Uber. My friend's picking us up. Oh, I thought it was an Uber. Three dinky, huh, dude? I saw that a fast teller. Two little Urupas are two like Provotons are actually at Provotonki after you. That's right. Dear. The special this apartment all Afghan. The apartment too? Yeah, yeah, this all. But they will think the Afghan is the the market. 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 so what's really fantastic about the city of Iwu is that it kind of reminds me of Kabul in a certain way. I mean, you know, if, if Kabul were to be, you know, one day um, more developed than it currently is, inshallah, but like, it's a mixture of both like nice greenery and, you know, high risers and tall buildings and whatnot. So I don't know, for me, it looks pretty balanced out. Um, it doesn't feel too congested from what I see from where I've been um, but yes the drive from the train station to the hotel uh, was really pretty my brother and I were able to go to this restaurant called um, Ariana restaurant I might be saying it wrong but it was an Afghan restaurant and we ended up getting um, Afghan food here in China because I was craving Shlombe and I was like oh oh I really want Shlombe um, Shlombe, for those of you who don't know, is also called Dor and Tari, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's a yogurt based drink and it's so, so good. I can't live without that stuff. Um, anyways, we ended up going to the first Afghan restaurant in Iwu. And what's even more interesting about this city is that Iwu actually has, like, is heavily dense with more. Um, is heavily dense with Afghans than anywhere else in China, which is kind of cool. So now I'm just like, damn, I kind of want to do like a story on like here, you know, on Afghans here in China. But unfortunately, yesterday I just felt awkward taking out my camera in the restaurant um, because you know the guests that we were with, they weren't family. Um, I didn't want to make them feel uncomfortable as well. But the restaurant was really beautiful, multiple floors. There was a masjid on the eighth floor even. It was ran by Chinese Muslims. It's kind of a nice to see, especially with the climate of Muslims here in China, with what you know all the unfortunate stories that we've been hearing so seeing these chinese muslims run an afghan restaurant here in iwu was super 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 nice their food was fantastic uh, i liked the shlombe a lot I, my brother didn't he was just like it was it, there was something missing i was like i i personally liked it um, again, I wish, I just wish I was able to bust out my camera, or even my phone camera, to kind of just kind of like show you guys, you know, everything, but I couldn't. Ironically, we're in the city where <laughs> most Afghans in China are, and so it's going to be really cool the next few days seeing and being able to explore, uh, you know, what these people have been doing here. But it's really cool because yesterday I was able to see Afghans speaking fluent Chinese and I'm just like, oh, what? Um, and another cool like realization was that um, Pashto actually is very similar to Chinese in the way it's pronounced. So like when I'm speaking Pashto with my brother, it kind of sounds like Chinese now that I like think about it. And like pr pronouncing the city's name, like in America we say Shanghai, Shanghai, right? But it's really Shanghai. And that's kind of like the way we'd say in Pashto too, like Pashto, 
pronunciation, you don't really open your mouths and stuff. You know, I mean, you don't really elongate the vowels and whatnot. And um, I feel like the Chinese kind of do that as well when it, when it comes to speaking their language. And Pashto, in a sense, is kind of similar to that. So the pronunciation of the cities, like once I learn, I'm just like, okay, let me say it as if I'm speaking Pashto. So I'm not going to say Yi Wu, it's Yi Wu. You don't really open your mouth. I may, I may be wrong, this is kind of like my self observation, but I think, I personally think Pashto and Chinese, in terms of pronunciation, are very, very similar. At least for my dialect. But, anyways, guys, that's about it. That's my first day here in China. Um, hopefully, I can share more stories and have the courage to film more cultural aspects. And I really, really, really want to dig into the Afghans here in China, but I can't promise you any of that just because. Again, I have to respect people's privacies, and you know how conservative Afghans tend to be. So, anyways, that's all for now. Talk to you guys later. Peace! Now, imagine being Afghan and having a wedding here. Honestly, this is a pretty big haul for a wedding. Like, come on, guys. I need those Afghans that live in Ewu to invite me to one of their weddings. The creator said, I don't have time for that. Ewu could just run quick. Oh, I don't have time for that.